I not a, was not a supporter of the Affordable Care Act, although in the conversations that I've had, I mean, I still do, used to be 69 town hall meetings, now 105, and I've had lots of conversations with Kansans about it. Most of the time it was complaints, concerns, consequences that occurred as the result of the Affordable Care Act to them and their families. Sometimes it was a business person who would say, you know, I can't afford to do this or I'm, I'm holding back on growing my business. Every once in a while there would be someone who would say, Jerry, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, has been very helpful to me and my family. Uh, and what I would say then and what I would repeat now is, I'm glad. But we need to figure out how to take care of you in your circumstance without doing damage to other people in their circumstance. And that's a difficult thing to do, and I, I don't know whether we will be successful. But I wanted to tell you at least how I was thinking about this. Um, I would not have voted for the House passed version of their fix. I said that at the time. I, I would say it to again. And I'm pleased that the Senate, in a sense, is starting over trying to figure this out from a different approach. The end result may be there's not 51 votes for anything. I don't know that. I hope not. I hope we can do things that improve the circumstances that people find themselves in. This is a different issue than any I've ever faced uh, as a public official. Uh, and it's different, I and mean, it would be easy, and I hear this from certainly my Republican colleagues when they have a town hall meeting and people are there with signs and protesting, and they see it as a political thing. Uh, you know, that's people who oppose the election of President Trump. Uh, that's Democrats, that's progressives, and they're trying to make an issue out of the Affordable Care Act. I don't have any doubt but what a lot, let me choose my words more carefully, that some of this is politics. But the reason this is a different issue for me, the way I see it as something different than most things that we, what we deal with is, it's so personal with people. The consequences of our decisions have such an impact upon them and their families. And I've had too many conversations with people that I know in church on Sunday with our kids' teachers in which the tears start streaming down their cheeks, worried about what's going to happen, particularly related to pre-existing condition and what this means in their family circumstance if changes are made. So there's nothing lightly done here on, on my part. Won't be anything lightly done. I ask and for the Senate leadership to just schedule this legislation for committee hearings, um, have amendments, have a process for in which every member of the committee could, we'd have, we've had witnesses bring in experts and try to figure out what we could do to improve the situation. That's not what's happening. Um, what I would hope is that every member of the Senate, Republican and Democrat, would have the chance to offer their amendments and votes be taken and we figure out where the votes are. Part of the problem, and it would be easy to, to chastise, to criticize Republicans for this, I suppose, but Chuck Schumer announced early on that there will not be a single Democrat vote to do anything to change the Affordable Care Act. So when I make the request that we do this in a more broad way, the stage is not set for that, and I think it's a mistake. I, I criticize the Democrats for passing the Affordable Care Act on Christmas Eve with straight Democrat party line votes. And I would prefer that we not do the same thing in reverse. So it's, I don't like the circumstance I'm in. Here are the things that I think are the most important for me to pay attention to. First would be how does it affect Kansans, Americans, their individuals and families. Uh, and by that I mean generally co-payments, deductibles, the cost, the premiums, and the issue of pre-existing condition. Um, secondly, I would say that how does it affect health care providers? You know, I posted, I, I completed another round of 127 hospital visits uh, last week in Syracuse. I've now visited every hospital of the United States Senator in Kansas. 127th happened to be Syracuse, and we posted the picture, and people were uh, complaining on my Facebook page, well, why don't you talk to people instead of, like, the providers? They're the problem. Well, where we come from, the providers are hugely important to us. And whether or not they stay in business, whether or not the hospital door remains open, whether or not there's a physician in the community is a huge issue to us. And so the second kind of pillar of things I look at is what does it do to increase the chances that health care remains available? You can have affordable health care, I suppose. I don't know that we'll ever see it the way we would like it, but you can have more affordable health care. And if you don't have a hospital in your community, 
if you can't access it, then it becomes something irrelevant in a sense. So the second part of that is how do we make certain, that, and incidentally, in 127 hospitals, there's not a hospital today who is in better financial condition today than they were when the Affordable Care Act passed. And you can point some fingers at Medicaid expansion in Topeka, but a large part of this is their bad debt is so significant because of co-payments and deductibles. If you had a $200 co-payment or deductible, you figured out how to pay $25 a month to get it taken care of. If you got a $2,500 co-payment or deductible, it's like I can't do anything and the hospital ends up with greater bad debt than they had before. The, the third one is um, how it affects the economy. This is a huge component of our economy, healthcare. 